Guillermo Marconi invented the first practical radio transmitter and receiver in the year 1895. It used radio waves to transmit information. In the antenna of any radio transmitter, the charges move back and forth very rapidly to produce radio waves. These waves travel through air or vacuum to reach the radio receiver. The radio waves forces the charges present in the antenna to move back and forth. This way informations are received. The signals coming from the antenna are converted back into the information being transmitted using radio demodulator circuits. Now the question is how to create such oscillatory motion of charges in the transmitter antenna. The answer is by using alternating current. You can also find alternating current in speakers that produces sound waves. So knowledge of alternating current is necessary to learn about radios and countless other devices. Alternating current is also used in transmission and distribution of electrical power that reaches your home. It is used due to higher efficiency of either stepping up or stepping down voltages by using transformers. Transformers only work with alternating current. So as you have already realized the importance of alternating current, without further delay, let's get started. First, what is current? When a 1.5 volt cell is connected across a bulb, charges flow through the circuit and the rate of the charge flow is called current. Only negative charges, that is, electrons flows in a circuit from negative terminal of the source, then through the load and finally to the positive terminal of the same source. But scientists in the past envisioned current as a flow of positive charges that is from positive terminal of the source to the negative terminal of the same source. This positive to negative current convention stuck even after the discovery of electrons. So remember, conventional current flows from positive of the source to the negative of the same source. And this type of current is called direct current. This is because when a cell is connected across a resistive load, the voltage of the cell being V and resistance R, current flow will be unidirectional which equals V divided by R. This is Ohm's law. So for a voltage of 1.5 volts and the load of resistance 0.5 ohms, current will be 3 amperes. It can be visualized in a graph. The x-axis represents time and the y-axis represents current. As you can see on the graph, the current remains constant 3 amperes. So this is called direct current. Let's take the simplest example of alternating current. Right now current is in positive direction, but as time passes, reverse the battery polarity. This time current flows in the other direction which means that it is negative. Again after some interval of time, reverse the polarity of battery. If you repeat this process again and again, you can see this kind of current wave form in the circuit. This current alternates from positive to negative, then again from negative to positive, and so on. This type of current is called alternating current, and this AC waveform is called square wave. There can be different types of AC waveforms depending upon applications such as sawtooth wave or triangular wave. This is how a square wave sounds like connected to a speaker. It kind of sounds like old retro games such as Super Mario because the soundtrack uses square wave. To produce alternating current through a load, the voltage provided by the source should also be alternating. So in an AC circuit, if voltage is like this, only then current will flow through the load in an alternating fashion. So, the phrase AC voltage means alternating voltage that creates alternating current. AC voltage starts from 0 volts, then it goes to highest positive voltage, also called positive peak voltage or amplitude. Then the voltage goes down to lowest voltage and again comes to 0 volts. This is called cycle of an AC waveform because after this, the cycle repeats again and again. The time it takes for a voltage or current to complete one cycle is called time period. 
This is a one second time period alternating current because each cycle takes one second to complete. Frequency is the measure of how frequently a cycle repeats in one second. In sound waves, higher frequency means higher pitch. So if one cycle is completed in one second, then the frequency is one cycle per second. But if two cycles are completed in one second, frequency will be two cycles per second. So it is a higher frequency alternating current. Higher frequency also means that you have to change voltage polarity faster. The unit of frequency is cycles per second or hertz, named after Heinrich Hertz. If frequency is 1 hertz, one cycle is completed in one second. So time period is one second. If frequency is 2 hertz, two cycles are completed in one second. And therefore time period will be half a second. So for any waveform having frequency f, the time period is equal to 1 divided by f. It would be impractical to alternate polarity of the source to produce alternating current. So instead, oscillators are used to produce alternating current. It uses DC as input and produces AC as output. Simple oscillator circuits can be made by using basic electronic components such as resistors, capacitors, inductors, and active components such as transistor. Oscillators are usually used in high frequency applications such as radios. But for applications where huge amount of power is required, AC generators are used. It uses mechanical energy such as rotation from wind or steam flow, etc to produce electrical energy. Inside any generator, the two basic requirements are a coil and a source of magnetic field, such as a permanent magnet or electromagnet. The mechanical energy input either rotates the coil or the magnet while keeping the other stationary. This is how a generator works. As the magnetic field is rotated near the coil, it induces voltage across the coil due to electromagnetic induction. Here is a practical demonstration. This is a coil whose output I have connected to the oscilloscope. And this is a neodymium magnet which I have connected to the shaft of a motor to get rotating magnetic field just for demonstration purpose. Now if I bring the coil near the rotating magnet, you can see voltage appearing on the oscilloscope screen. The output waveform looks like this. This is called sine wave and this is the most important and most commonly found alternating current waveform. In fact, all other waveforms such as square wave can be resolved into an infinite sine waves of different amplitude and frequencies. When added together, the original waveform is produced. This is the symbol for AC voltage source. It produces time varying voltage. When connected to a load, current flow alternates direction like this. And this is the current versus time graph. When a sine wave AC voltage is connected to a speaker, it sounds like this. The sine wave can be represented from the mathematical function sine theta. Consider a circle of radius 1 unit. The angle between the line and the horizontal is denoted by the Greek letter theta. Now if we draw a vertical line joining this point and the horizontal line, it forms a right angled triangle. And in trigonometry we learned that sine of theta is equal to line opposite to angle theta denoted by L divided by hypotenuse of the right angle triangle. And since hypotenuse is equal to radius of the circle that is one unit, so sin theta equals length of the vertical line L. So at theta equals zero degree, length is zero unit. If theta is increased to 30 degree, length becomes half unit. And at theta equals 90 degree, length is one unit. 
because it equals radius of the circle which is 1 unit. By further increasing theta at theta equals 180 degree length is 0 unit and at theta equals 270 degrees length is minus 1 unit. It is negative because the length is below horizontal axis and at theta equals 360 degrees length is 0 unit. You can use a scientific calculator to find sine of any angle such as sine of 26 degrees is 0 0.4383 and so on. If we plot length of this vertical line with respect to angle, we get this beautiful sine wave. An AC voltage source produces sinusoidal voltage over time. So in the equation we can substitute theta with time and the length of the vertical line with voltage. So we can write instantaneous voltage lowercase v is equal to sine of t. This diagram is called phasor diagram and length of the line which is the radius is equal to peak of the waveform. And this diagram is the waveform of voltage over time. You might wonder why we are representing the voltage waveform mathematically. But you will realize later how useful this is. To complete one cycle, it takes 360 seconds because the total angle is 360 degrees. To get one complete cycle in one second, you need to simply multiply time by 360. Now as time reaches one second, the angle becomes 360 degrees and one full cycle is completed. If you multiply by 2 in this, as time reaches 1 second, 2 cycles will be completed. And if you multiply by 3 in this, 3 cycles will be completed in 1 second. You may have already guessed what this number is. This is called frequency, denoted by F. The electricity we get at home is sinusoidal alternating current which has a frequency of 50 Hz in India. An AC voltage represented by instantaneous voltage lowercase v is equal to sine of 360 Ft has amplitude or peak voltage of 1 volt. So for any peak voltage v subscript p, just multiply it by sine of 360 Ft. For example, 60 sine of 360 Ft means the maximum value will be 60 volts and the minimum voltage will be minus 60 volts. So far we have used degree as a unit of angle, but SI unit of angle is more preferable. SI unit of angle is radian. It is a different way to measure angle, consider a circle of radius 1 unit. For any angle theta, the arc length of the circle is the angle in radian. So for 360 degrees, the total arc length is the circumference of the circle, which is equal to 2 pi r. And as r equal to 1 unit, it will be 2 pi. So 360 degrees means 2 pi radians. 180 degree will be pi radians. And 90 degree will be pi by 2 radians. Just remember that 360 degree equals 2 pi radians and then you will be able to convert to radians from degrees or to degrees from radians. The sine wave voltage equation in terms of radians will be this. 360 degree is 2 pi radians. Also in the equation, 2 pi frequency is called angular frequency denoted by omega. So the equation can be written as this. When a battery is connected across a load, current flows through it and the load dissipates the power which equals product of voltage and current. Similarly, in an AC circuit of sinusoidal voltage source, if a resistive load is connected, sinusoidal current will flow, given by instantaneous current lowercase i is equal to peak current i subscript p sine of 2 pi frequency t. Notice that both voltage and current are changing with time. So power also changes with time. 
So instead, average power is introduced. It is a constant value similar to power in DC circuits. It turns out that average power delivered in an AC circuit is product of peak voltage and peak current divided by 2. The derivation of this will be in the description box. Separating voltage and current, we get this. These two values are called RMS values, sometimes also called effective values. As an example, for RMS voltage of 5 volts and RMS current of 1 ampere, average power delivered to the load is 5 multiplied by 1, which equals 5 watts. I will discuss about this and much more in my alternating current power video. Until then, thanks for watching.